Hello and welcome to the Peter Mackay Motorsport Podcast. Thank you very much for tuning in to this episode. I hope you enjoy it. If you're new to the show, thank you very much for tuning in. Um, if you haven't had the chance to check out my interview um, with some of the, the stars of Scottish Motorsport recently, you can by subscribing to our show, the Peter Mackay Motorsport Podcast on Podbean uh, or iTunes or whatever your favourite podcast app is. Um, recently, I've been lucky enough um, to interview Doug Niven and the late the the cousin of the late great Jim Clark and hear the stories about the new Jim Clark Motor Museum that they've uh, raised money for and built recently uh, and also some of Doug's own uh, exploits behind the wheel racing for the Border Reavers and also some excellent stories some un previously unheard to me anyway and uh, stories about Jim Clark's career so do check that one out if you're a classic F1 fan or a Jim Clark fan I also had the chance a week or so ago to go up to Knock Hill uh, and meet with uh, Rory Butcher um, the current independent uh, British touring car champion I had a chat for about 25 minutes with him um, looking back at some of his experiences in GT cars uh, Formula Ford all these kinds of things as well so that was great to, to, to have, uh, have a chat with him and also a young man called Ronan Pearson who uh, joined uh, is this year will be joining the JCW Mini Challenge um, having won this year's Michelin um, Renault Clio Cup Championship so it was a pleasure to get to meet him and hear a little bit about his career and his preparations for the upcoming season um, uh, as, as well which are going very very well but on today's episode, um, is this episode is going to be the first in a little mini-series uh, talking about MotoGP, and in particular, the most famous MotoGP rider of all time, nine-time world champion Valentino Rossi. Now, in the 2019 season, racing for Yamaha has not been um, Valentino Rossi's best season, um, with minimal trips to the podium and no race wins, sadly, and lots of people calling into question his future in the sport. But of course, Valentino Rossi has been in the Moto Grand Prix paddock since 1996. Uh, hard to imagine, really. And has been in the premier class, uh, in the top class of racing since the year 2000. So he actually started in what we now know today as MotoGP when it was called the 500cc um, Grand Prix World Championship. So he actually started off racing in the top class on 500cc two strokes. That's how long he's been uh, around. So, and this year he celebrated his 400th race start uh, in Grand Prix racing. So I thought maybe look back through the archives and uh, and look out some of his favourite races. And interestingly, when I when I uh, when I looked at some of his best races, interestingly, there's the ones that stand out. They all have uh, a key theme. They all have a key rival at certain stages of Valentino Rossi's career. So the first episode we're going to start with is about uh, an, a very critical race during his rivalry with fellow Italian Max Biaggi. We're also going to talk about his rivalry with Casey Stoner, his rivalry with um, Jorge Lorenzo, and then most recently, Mark Marquez. Um, so um, today we're going to talk about Welcome 2004 um, in South Africa. So at the end of 2003, Rossi left the dominant Repsol Honda team. So Valentino Rossi uh, entered into MotoGP in the year 2000, um, racing for racing for Honda, um, and then won the title in 2001, 2002, and 2003 in dominant fashion aboard the much favoured Honda Honda RCV. Um, motorcycle but he was growing tired of the kind of um, the, the ethos of Honda and that they felt that the bike was much more important than the rider and basically that he was he was replaceable and he wanted to prove that that was not the case and um, Davide Brivio um, now look who now looks after the Suzuki MotoGP team and actually brought Suzuki back into the sport at that time Davide Brivio was in the management of the Yamaha MotoGP team which was absolutely in the doldrums it was not a, a a competitive bike whatsoever in the middle of 2003 but they managed to secretly work away go out Davide Brivio went out to Ibiza went out to Valentino Rossi's house and tried to convince him that things were going to change at Yamaha and Rossi took interest and long story short he decided to leave Honda 
and sign for Yamaha. And at first, his crew, who are still with him to this day, they originally thought that they would stay at Honda and they would not move to Yamaha. But he was able to convince them and they did. All of his crew that he'd had at Honda, Alex Briggs, Jeremy Burgess, etc., they did move across to Yamaha with him. Now, at the time, Yamaha's last pole position was at Valencia in 2002 and their last win was in Malaysia in 2002. The last time they'd won a Riders World Championship was with Wayne Rainey back in 1992. So Yamaha had gone through a real dry spell of performance while um, basically Repsol Honda won more or less every single championship in that, that period. You had Kevin Schwantz and the Suzuki in 1993. Then you had Mick Doohan domination followed by Alex Crivier, Kenny Roberts on a Suzuki and then back to Valentino Rossi on, on a Honda. So Honda had completely dominated the, the last decade or so of the sport. So to leave Honda on the back of three world titles was huge, huge news. Um, so Valentino Rossi was held to he was held to his contract with Honda to the very end of the year. So he didn't get an awful lot of testing time. Only a couple of months were left from when he was able to get riding the Yamaha to the first race of the season. And to turn a bike from what was you know barely <laughs> barely getting into the points into a race winner, well that was what both him and his mainly Australian group of uh, mechanics really um really did very well to 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 change the motorcycle and also Yamaha themselves were able to re, um react to the requests of Rossi and the technical geniuses who who came with him from Honda they they even they changed the they they came up with four new engine designs um for Valentino Rossi to try and he chose one to go for the season with now Interestingly, it's amazing looking back, this is 15 years ago, 2004, and if you look at the moment now, uh, this would be the sort of thing that Valentino Rossi could really do with right now, and also his fellow Yamaha riders could really do with right now, is a new engine with a bit more horsepower and a bit more grunt. But So it's a, <laughs> it's it's not a new problem for um, for Yamaha to have problems with their, uh, with their engine and the power uh, of their engine. So they approached... They came into the the weekend at Welcome at the Pekisa Freeway uh, in South Africa, which was a very it's not used in MotoGP in the uh, in the MotoGP calendar anymore. A very slow, twisty, bumpy circuit, the second slowest average speed of any track in use in MotoGP at the time, and that was vital as the race got underway because Rossi was heading up against his arch nemesis Max Biaggi on a much much faster in a straight line at least on the much much faster Honda RCV but Valentino Rossi came into this weekend really determined to show not only Honda but the six factory riders that were riding these Hondas that he was the best in the world regardless of the motorcycle that he was riding so he had what he called after the race the weekend of his career because he led every single session in practice and put his brand new Yamaha M1 on pole position by just 0.035 seconds from another arch nemesis, Seti Gibernau, closely followed by Max Biaggi in third. So the scene was set for a battle royale in the baking sunshine uh, in South Africa now the around the area there's a lot of diamond mining and things like that so the the actual surface the the tremors from all of the diamond mining around caused a lot of bumps in the circuit so it was a very bumpy twisty circuit so really demanded a very stable motorcycle which is exactly what Valentino Rossi and his team had been able to been able to magic up in just a matter of months so it really is one of these fantastic stories in the history of MotoGP when really Valentino Rossi turned the tables um, against the odds and brought out a result and a lot of the races that we're going to talk about in this series um, a lot of the time that is the case when he really wins when he's least expected to to, to do so is when he's had some of his very best um very best right so they took to the grid and they got started 
Rossi bolted away from pole position. He got the whole shot, got ahead of Max Biaggi and was able to lead the majority of the first section of the race. He actually led most of the original 18 laps of the race. Max Biaggi would occasionally get past him and it was very, very clear where the strengths of the two motorcycles uh, lay. Down the very, the, what, it's not a very long straight at Welcome, but the what, whatever straight line that there was, the Honda was really able to to open up um, open up the, the taps and blast past the much slower Yamaha. So Max Biaggi on the Cito Pons Camel Honda at the time really, Really was able to power past Rossi and he was just left defenceless on the straight and it, in the early stages of the race it looked like Max Biaggi could more or less do that at will however when they got to the end of these long straights Valentino Rossi was able to deploy the secret weapon not only of his riding style but of his newly developed Yamaha where he was able to break so much later than Max Biaggi turn tighter, be able to you know, use that nimble, manoeuvrable Yamaha to get back into the lead and to avoid Max Biaggi from getting away because he knew if he let Max Biaggi get out in front, he could use the power of the Honda more and get away and, and, and run off into the, into the lead. So Rossi knew exactly what he had to do. He had to, whenever Biaggi went past, he had to snap straight back. So after this had been exchanged a couple of times in the early stages of the race, Biaggi decided to just sit back, sit calm and just follow behind um, Valentino Rossi until five, lap, five laps to go. It looked like, oof, is Biaggi sitting behind? What's he going to do? And with five laps to go, he made his move and he got past Valentino Rossi. And for a lap or two, it looked like Max Biaggi was going to make, he could possibly make the break. But Valentino Rossi was driven on by he was it was almost like he was picking the bike up and dragging it along out of pure determination and what's very clear in this battle was was that not only you know in the early stages of the race Seti Jibber now managed to just about hang on to the pace of Rossi and Biaggi but before too long um, Valentino Rossi and Max Biaggi disappeared into the distance and it was so clear that Max Biaggi and Valentino Rossi's hatred of each other was just driving them on, taking them on an extra tenth of a second. It was so obvious to see that both riders were really r raising their level up another notch just because of who they were riding against. That was very, very clear to me when watching the race back uh, again. And with two laps to go, Valentino Rossi thought, I'm not having any of this. This is my race. This is going to be part of my legacy to, to win this race. And at the end of the back straight, even against the superior power advantage of the Honda, he was able to break incredibly late on his Yamaha dive up the inside of Max Biaggi, ma losing the front end of the motorcycle massively, absolutely millimetres from crashing the motorcycle, but managed to keep it up, blocked past, um, got just inside Max Biaggi and managed to power out. And after that, it was clear Max Biaggi was spent. He had nothing left in the tank. And two laps later, Valentino Rossi would cross over the line to win his first ever race with Yamaha and to set one of the most memorable races in MotoGP history. Now, the images of Valentino Rossi's celebrations after that race are some of the most memorable and vivid images in any MotoGP fan's memory. Even if you weren't watching MotoGP at the time, these images are often replayed um, of Valentino Rossi parking up his blue and yellow Galoshi's um, Yamaha parking it up against the tyre wall and leaving the engine on, kneeling down in front of the motorcycle on his knees and just bowing in front of it, almost praying to it and talking to it like it's a, you know, a, the bond that he has with this motorcycle and it was clearly an incredibly emotionally charged moment. It's just one of these moments that you get in sport that just stick in, stick in your memory and he was clearly had given absolutely every every single inch uh, that he had to um, to to win that race. Um, once he got back on the bike, pulled a wonderful, wonderful burnout, turning the bike round and round and round, wanting to make sure he made the most of every moment of winning that motorcycle race. In doing so, he was the first man to win 
two races in two consecutive races on different makes of motorcycles. So he'd won the last race of his career with Honda and then won his first race of his career with Yamaha. And of course, he went on to win that 2004 title. So breaking a 12-year drought for Yamaha uh, and the first guy since Eddie Lawson in the late 1980s to win two championships in a row on two different makes of motorcycle. In fact, Eddie Lawson, he went the other way. He went from Yamaha over to Honda to do that. So that race at Welcome, that really, for me, uh, is one of the most significant races in Valentino Rossi's career. And it really shows how it, it, it almost um, epitomises Valentino Rossi and Max Biaggi's rivalry. Because really, although Max Biaggi was a you know four times a 250cc champion, he never managed to make quite that step to beat Valentino Rossi over a championship year in MotoGP. He did go on, however, to win the World Superbike Championship for Aprilia, Max Biaggi, so had one of the most amazing careers of any motorcycle racer that, that's ever lived, but he was just always that second fiddle to Valentino Rossi. And they were two very different characters as well. You know, Biaggi, very serious, um, you know, very private, um, you know, maybe slightly less... Um, likable in general, Rossi a little bit more fun-loving, a bit more of a joker, bit more, bit you know, bit more big smiles. Um, certainly better at the PR side uh, of of things uh, as 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 well. So, a wonderful race. Welcome two thousand and four, and it really set the scene for some of the other classic MotoGP races that we saw from Valentino Rossi throughout his career. So, the next episode in this series will be. 2008 Laguna Seca, Valentina Rossi versus Casey Stoner, a rival who did really ask the biggest question of Valentina Rossi. An incredible race which I can't wait to talk to you a bit more about in the next episode. Thanks very much for listening to this episode. I really hope you've enjoyed it. If you've been enjoying the show, do please subscribe to the channel on your chosen podcast platform. Um, that way you don't miss an episode and your device will send you a little reminder um, that a new episode has been published. You can also follow the show uh, on the social media uh, with Facebook, which is the Peter Mackay Motorsport Podcast, with Instagram, which is at Peter Mackay Motorsport Twitter, which is at Mackay Podcast, and finally, the old-fashioned way, the online with www.petermackaymotorsport.com. I would love to hear from you through any of those channels. Thank you very much for listening, and I look forward to speaking to you again very soon. <laughs>